Hello! Welcome to my July wrap up. In this video I'm going to do pretty much what it says on the tin, talk you through the books that I read in July and let you know what I thought of them. So the first book I read in July was, and I always have to check because I get the title the wrong way around, White Rabbit Red Wolf by Tom Pollock. This got a lot of quite good reviews just before I read it and so I was really really excited to pick it up and give it a go. You might notice it doesn't have the um, book title on the front cover because this is a proof copy from the publisher Walker Books who were very kind to give it to me. And I have to say I was not disappointed. This book was a lot of fun and I really do recommend it. It's about a boy who suffers from chronic anxiety and one night he goes with his mum to a gala that's very much in her honour because she's a very significant scientist. And while he's there his mother is attacked and then his sister disappears. And it's up to him to figure out what's going on and to put all the pieces together and work out how to save everybody. Or is it? I can't really say much more about this book without spoiling it, but it really had me on the edge of my seat. It was a very, re very, very interesting book and I really, really enjoyed it and would strongly recommend it. I'm going to lend it to my partner next because I really think that he will enjoy it as much as I have. The next book I finished reading was my breakfast book for a couple of weeks and if you've been watching my videos before then you'll know that I like to read non-fiction in the mornings before I go to work while I'm eating my breakfast. And this book is What the Most Successful People Do Before Breakfast by Laura Vanderkam. It is such a long title that I did have to check it out in the screen on top of the camera even though it's backwards, um, back to front, yes. I can read mirror writing pretty well because I practiced a lot when I went through a spy phase when I was a kid. So yeah, weird skills I have. Anyway, um, I read this for a couple of weeks in the morning and it was great. It's a lot like her earlier book, 168 Hours, which I read last year and really loved. It was one of my top books of the year. It's a little bit about time management, but mostly about making the best out of your time in the mornings the weekends and while you're at work. So this is actually a compilation of three books which were originally ebooks, um, one focusing on breakfast, one focusing on weekends and one focusing on work. What I really love about Laura Vanderkam's books is that although she talks about being, pro about being more productive, about being more successful, she challenges you to define success for yourself and suggest that when you make more time, you actually spend it doing things that you will enjoy and that will help you feel fulfilled. It's not all about, you know, side hustling until you drop dead and just being as productive as humanly possible. It's also about enjoying your life, which I really appreciate and I think is a really important message to get across and something that I wish more of this type of book would bring up because who really just wants to work all the time? The next book I finished reading, I actually finished reading On the Plane to Lisbon, and that is The Big Light by Julie Mayhew. If you watched my wrap up from last month, you'll know that then I read her most recent book, which is called The Electrical Venus. Yes, I remembered it. I should have made notes before I recorded this, but I did not. But I remembered it, so it's fine. Anyway, I really enjoyed The Electrical Venus, so I was very interested in seeing where this one went. So I think the best way I can describe this is by reading the blurb, to be honest with you. Nazi England, 2014. Jessica Keller is a good girl, a champion ice skater, model student of the Bund Deutsche Marden. Who knows if I pronounced that right? I did French, not German at school. French and Spanish. And dutiful daughter of the Great German Reich. Her best friend Clementine is not so submissive. Passionately different, Clem is outspoken, dangerous, radical, and the regime has noticed. Jess cannot keep both her perfect life and her dearest friend her first love. But which can she live without? So basically, a, in the um, afterword at the back of the book, the author explains that she wrote this book really to answer the question, what would life be like if the Nazis, did, Nazis had won the Second World War? And I think this book does kind of 
capture that pretty well. I think it's quite realistic, you know, obviously not having any real idea of what it would be like because that didn't happen, at least not in this version of the universe. It is very chilling and I did get really absorbed into what was happening to the characters but there is, because of the setting and because you know that the main character doesn't really have the control over her own life. There is this overriding sense of doom and gloom which kind of made bad things happening feel like a foregone conclusion, if that makes any sense. There wasn't a sense of hope running through this book, which I think, had I not been a captive audience on the plane, would have made it harder to get through. But as I was on a plane I had nothing else to do, I did get through it quite quickly and I did enjoy it and I would recommend it. And if you have read it, let me know because it would be interesting to discuss it with people when we can talk about the more spoilery elements. <laughs> the last book I finished reading I started on my holiday and finished a few days ago and that was The Other Life by Julia Gray. Um, I read this on ebook, I borrowed it from the library so I don't have a copy to wave at you, but it is about a boy kind of remembering and trying to put together the pieces around a mystery surrounding him, his former best friend Hobie, and what happened to their former tutor Jason several years ago. Um, with Norse gods. <laughs> there are, what I really liked about this novel was A, the references to the Norse gods, it was really interesting, um, and B, the heavy metal references. I thought that was quite fun to have um, all those references to a really specific genre of music because I think quite often in books authors just kind of drop in a lot of generic pop references or they go with references that they know and I think you know, there are still teenagers who are really into specific genres and would go back and listen to the old stuff or would have been introduced to older stuff by their parents and so I think it's really good for that to kind of be an ongoing feature and I liked how he would compare sounds to songs by Metallica. It added a really great level of detail to that book. I read The Other Life because I also have Little Liar, which I actually have a copy of right here. Um, by Julia Gray on my TBR after she was the guest of honour at what Drinkway, which is the um, meetup that I run with my friend Jim, for people who love YA in London. Um, and I wanted to read her first book first, so I thought I would put that on my nook and see whether I felt like reading it while I was on holiday, which I did. Um, and I was really and I really liked it and now I'm really looking forward to reading Little Liar. Um, again, I think The Other Life is a book that I can't talk too much about because it will spoil it for you because it is about a mystery. Um, so yeah, that's all I can say really about that one. <laughs> so that's the end of my July wrap up video. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Links to my social media profiles are in the description box below and you'll also find a link to my free e-course which is for people who want to read more or who don't know where to start when trying to discover books they'll love. Like I say it's totally free and you can sign up at the link below. Thank you again. You'll see me again soon. Bye.